Well, really, um, British Grovers, it's like a, it's sort of a labour of love, really. It's, a, it's not something that you can ever do to, in terms of wanting to make a make money out in any way, shape or form, but it really helps it helps us get the work done that we want to get done, and it's just such a blessing. Uh, in a lot of ways, it represents all the things that that Chuck and myself have missed in different studios that were work, worked out, you know, over the a lot of years. I think Chuck probably more <laughs> years than I have. Um, oh. But it, so he, he you know, <laughs> he, this is more now. like more like something that um, Chuck knows more about than I do. But we actually worked together on this board in America. Your, your first album, yeah, yeah. your first solo album was on this desk. Uh, Golden Heart. And this was in a this was in a, a big room in commercially run room, as most studios are commercially run in in the states. And uh, and Chuck told me when the studio closed, as most studios end up doing, <laughs> um, that we could pick it up. Yeah, it was a bank repo, so. Uh, Got you a pretty good deal on it, I think. And but then, then you had to put a lot of money in it, didn't you, to get it sorted out? Yeah, and it was sort of uprated. Yeah. Needed a few things doing to it to make it um, a little better. But really, in a lot of ways, this the, it, this represents the best in, the best in American recording. Yeah. In many ways, yeah, just like the API. other the other room has a Neve board in it, which represents the, the best thing. of the British tradition of recording too. Mm -hmm. and, and also the head tech at the studio is a next Decca man. So we have a kind of an EMI background, a Decca background, and here with the API we've got a, uh, a lot of American influence. And of course Chuck and I sat down and we actually drew out the kind of thing that we would really like to go on being able to work in. Or didn't like about studios. Yeah, or yeah. just didn't like yeah. about other rooms. Mm -hmm. um, and and it, it's, it's pretty this one because it's not a big studio space out there to record in so we've actually plugged even the Hammond organ that's over there it's been yeah. wired so that you can go it goes right through into the studio and um, and it's just there so this space is really more for you to come in here and and work at your leisure and and you can keep the big room working with other clients yeah and, that, that and can happen too that yeah. tends to happen quite a lot yeah it's a really great space in here, though. It's just so comfortable. You got, yeah, I love it. Yeah. I love this board, and I love the sound that it makes. But now the actual studio space itself is actually based around. Uh, well, we used to record. I used to have a little sort of joke studio, really, in in a little muse house that I used to live in, and uh, it was the bedroom. It was the back bedroom of um, of that little house. Yeah. We drew a lot of work in that room, didn't we? And what about these, Mark? Look at this. I mean, how many studios are you going to find three studers, you know, all lined up in a row? Pretty amazing, huh? Yeah, a it's, it's a dying art. For yeah. that. You know, there's a lot of kids that work in studios and they're trading. They, they never work with tape at all. Yeah. You find these mostly sitting in the hallways of studios not being used, but we use them in every, every chance we can. So this is all it is. It's just really that just that it happened to be more or less the same dimensions as that little back bedroom that I'd learned to get some reasonable sounds in there. And so, and so we actually do manage to get some pretty good sounds yeah. in here. Just um, some great microphones here. Yeah, there's some the old old Neumanns and Sheps and and uh, these are things that just set the way that I would maybe be recording an acoustic guitar oh, be the sitting there in here is gorgeous thing, yeah. and we've got some lovely old microphones here to work with and that old amp down there I've done an awful lot of recording with that it's an old brown Tolex Vibrolux I saw one on eBay <laughs> just you? today yeah yeah and I was uh, lusting after it yeah yeah they're like hen's teeth now yeah and really what we're trying to do is really the best of the the best of the old but if there's a, a new bit of kit here, like Chuck would say, you know, there, there'd be a, a more modern microphone. These are really old and very rare, but if something turns up that works well, then we'll, then we'll use it. And then, for instance, there's a guy making these amps. I'm using these amps quite a bit now. There's a Reinhardt amplifier, and he's actually made it for me. Uh, uh, but it works great, and, you know, with all the old stuff as well. So, th actually, this is an ancient old ba basket weaver cabinet here then so there you've got the old and the new married up and hey if it works we'll use it 
if it's good we'll use it. so we'll go to the the, the the big room and show you show you around there okay we've actually in the in the big in the machine room for the other room we've got an again we've got more of these wonderful old studio tape machines about 16 track heads on them and we've even got an eight track machine in there now and these guys are our mastering machines which are wonderful wonderful machines and again work with different, different varieties you've got the quarter inch tape half inch and in the other room we've actually got a one inch two track so you've, you've got like with this half inch you've got half inch of tape for for the two tracks and there you actually have one inch for both tracks and you get best signal noise ratio that you can yeah get. that's a lot of mastering to that machine yeah, yeah. With different mediums, you know, your different mastering mediums, your record sounds different. Mm -hmm. But we're off to a bit of a flying start with this place, and then we're actually picking up bits of silverware now. Yeah. Uh, there's a Best Studio Award there with a... And in fact, uh, the competition, that's the Producers Award that we just got there. I think the other, the other um, nominees were uh, Air Studios and Abbey Road, was two of the finest studios anyway so I love the, uh, all the awards that you've gotten over the years that means a lot yeah. I know the, the next day you wrote me and said hey Chuck we just won studio of the year and the best studio, yeah. so I had to email back all the guys here and congratulate them because the studio is you know, really about everybody in it yeah absolutely is yeah. Uh, wow look at this room <laughs> Again, you know, the, the whole thing that Chuck and I that we wanted was flexibility, um, and flexibility is what you've got here. Is, so you can actually, you can make the you can make the room pretty pretty lively if you want to. But what what I I, I remember saying to Chuck, what I really want to do is to be, get a, get a big deadish room too, so that you can do things in. There are a lot yeah, of the great different, different panels here where you can yeah. flip them. They'll be soft on one side or hard on another yeah. side, and it changes the way this, the room sounds that way. And, or we can put panels in over the windows and deaden up the room that way too, you know. So. And, uh, you know, and, and we can open it up too. So all of these really? doors that you see, all the way along here, um, all the way around, they all come out. And, and if necessary, we can even pull the, 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 the grand piano out into the room because we have a little, little it's on wheels. Mm -hmm. So we can actually roll it out and, and record out here. And so that's really the thing. You see, there's Dan there. He's got his drum kit in the, on the floor at the moment because Chuck's recordings, for the kind of recordings we're doing now, he wants to do, we're looking for that kind Get of a that sound. Great big room sound. Yeah. So, so, and, but if we, you know, if we wanted to, just to shut it all down and make a different kind of an effect then we can easily do that we could put the drums anywhere we could put them in any one of well, these that rooms rooms. actually specially built to have drums in it mm -hmm. uh, but it, it works great for your guitar amp too yeah, doesn't fantastic. it yeah. Yeah. and sometimes you know I can, I can be playing a, a guitar and have a cabinet out here and and it's being picked up by a, a decker tree of of what they call the decker tree of of room mics with some very rare Neumanns on the, you know, hanging M50s, off that tree there. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah, orchestral. And uh, you can get the full effect, the smoothness in yeah. a nice big room, you know. And so, so at the moment, we've got the drums in the room, as I say, but then if, if, if for instance, we'd have Richard or Glenn working in different booths, so if we don't want the leakage, we don't need to have it. If we do want the leakage, we can open up one of these doors and you can bring the sound in, in into the room and in various different... See, you know, Glenn is always practicing his string bass and there he is doing what Glenn does. Knocking the rust off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that he... Um, Glenn is always, always at work on being the best bass player that one can think of. Um, but yeah, so it's again... You know, we can pull an amplifier out into the room if we want to, or we can and record it in the room, or we can record in the booth. And that's the great thing about it. I mean, there's, we've even got a little booth over there where you could play a mandolin in there and have the drums bashing away in the room, and you wouldn't yeah, you wouldn't want to hear it. Totally so that's what we were looking for was flexibility, really, to be able to do anything. Yeah. That well, we did a little blues song in here the other day where 
we wanted it to sound like everybody was in the room, but rather than move everybody out into the room, we just opened up the doors and, and the whole, everybody filtered into the room and it just adds to that feeling like everybody's all together playing in the same space, which just works for the song, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. And then this is this is where Danny's got his little setup here in the room, and he's just tinkering. Like drummers are always, drummers are always tinkering with all their stuff. <laughs> and I've actually started collecting some drums too. So sometimes Dan plays there. What's that you've got there, Dan? That's one of my snare drums. It's one of your power tones, Rogers power tone. It's an old Rogers wood shell, and it's called Raspberry Red Ripple. Yeah. No, it's called Wine Red Ripple. This is Bobby's. Yeah, Bobby Columbus drumming Bud Sweat and Tears. Uh, but. Yes, that sort of, I just love that from, you know, it's like being a kid and seeing, wow, the wine red ripple. <laughs> I'd love one of those. Yeah. And in fact, that bass is mine back here as well, that there's a Glenn's been playing, that's a Fiesta Red Fender. That is the pearl of the house. Yeah, you know, maybe doesn't mean much to you, but to it's us so it means cool. plenty. <laughs> <laughs> 